In 2002, Arthur Humphrey would found Last Day of Work, a game development company which has cemented its legacy in the simulation genre through games such as Fish Tycoon, Virtual Families, and Virtual Villages, using a game mechanic that has revolutionised modern games such as Clash of Clans and Heyday. When asked about why he first started out in a 2006 podcast, he said, It, it was really not the intention to, to be an indie developer. My intention was just kind of to make some games, make a few bucks, and see, okay, if I can make a game in X months and it makes X dollars and I make 20 of these, can I make a living at this? Arthur Humphrey began by creating video games on a VIC-20, where he would release his clone of Pengo, the hit Sega game, into the public domain. This clone, while simple, allowed Arthur to gain an insight on game development and the rewards of creating video games that people would enjoy to play. Arthur Humphrey soon began creating card games for the Palm OS, as the barrier of entry was very low and card game code was easy to reuse. It was at this time where he would slowly start building up a following by establishing himself within a niche of the card game genre. Some games created during this time include Easy Blackjack, Video Poker Teacher, and Pocket Pie Gal. While each of these card games are different, the premise of each of the video games are the same, to help new players learn the rules and strategy for their respective card game. Wanting to move away from card games and create game games, Arthur developed Little Pocket Pet, a pet game similar to the Tomagotchi games that gets players to look after and play with a virtual pet on their mobile device. This game could generate thousands of unique pets that had different looks and personalities, so no two games would be the same. It also involved the pet learning from the actions of the player, so you could reinforce a pet's bad actions or let them learn new ones. While not groundbreaking, this game was the first to incorporate a feature that would set Last Day of Work out from the competition. The game ran in true real time. If players did not check up or care for their pets constantly, they could run the risk of logging in next time and their pet would be deceased. This true real-time aspect was not being implemented by many companies at the time and truly was an innovative feature for Last Day of Work projects. Last Day of Work's next project would define the company's direction and shape every project heading forward. Plant Tycoon is a game where players would care for plants, sell the plants in a store and cross-breed plants to find rare breeds that may sell for more. Plant Tycoon featured six rare plants that players would strive to breed, which kept players engaged with the game. This game utilised the real-time formula from Little Pocket Pet, ensuring players would come back to the game often to ensure their plants haven't died. This game was the biggest hit so far from Last Day of Work, and would evolve into the incredibly popular Fish Tycoon. We Essentially it evolved, figuratively and literally, and, and plants became fish and Fish Tycoon uh, was born. Fish Tycoon's gameplay mechanics was essentially the same as the prior Plant Tycoon, but the simulation of virtual fish instead of plants was a huge feature to capture a younger audience. These two games captured the casual player base perfectly, as the game simulated caring for plants and fish without any complicated controls or mechanics, ensuring young and old users can have an enjoyable experience. These tycoon games are only one of the styles of casual simulation that defines Last Day of Work. In 2005, Last Day of Work would release the game Village Sim to Palm OS devices. This game would have a group of people get stranded on an island where the player has the characters forage and build to survive. The game would have a tech tree that would unlock new content such as buildings, better foraging techniques and ideas that could progress the story. The goal for the game is to reach all of the achievements and form a functioning village. This title would have the villagers age and die if they got too old, sick or starved and operated with the iconic real-time mechanic where the villagers would progress even when your device is inactive. The player is able to assign villagers to certain roles that level up the more times they attempt a task. The higher level a villager was in the task, the more productive they would be, while failing the task much less often. This game would be ported to Windows the following year, sparking the beginning of the iconic Virtual Villagers franchise. This game has the perfect formula for a simulation game with easy mechanics that is enjoyable for every casual player. Even winning the Palm Powered Up Award the same year it was released. The first Virtual Villagers game titled Virtual Villagers A New Home would be released in 2006. The game is a port of the Village Sim game for Windows with updated graphics to match the style of Fish and Plant Tycoon. This further continued the lore of Isola, having the villagers crash on the same island as the Fish Tycoon game is set. 
The second Virtual Villagers game, titled Virtual Villagers 2 The Lost Children, was released in 2007, bringing new challenges while maintaining the same core mechanics as the original game. This was the first installment which would introduce collectibles and unique brews that users would mix herbs and spices to create a random effect on the villagers. These additions gave players a reason to engage with their villagers while waiting for tasks to be completed, as players would want to collect all the collectibles, or experiment with mixing class to find what combinations achieved what effect. This game is a masterclass on how to make a sequel that builds upon the original game while not detracting anything from the previous installment. Virtual Villagers 3 The Secret City would release in 2008, where instead of building a village from the ground up, villagers would explore the remains of a ruined city and attempt to restore it to its prior glory. This game brought with it new additions such as real-time weather and a travel chief who would direct workflow, generate small amounts of food and more. The game furthered the story of the Virtual Villagers franchise and would grant an additional area when all three gems are collected, which demonstrates a form of progression unseen in previous installments. Virtual Villagers 4 The Tree of Life was released in 2010. Only one new mechanic was introduced to this installment, being the ability to customise your starting 5 tribe members. This game had the player try to grow the village while saving the Tree of Life from dying. This installment brought with it a lot of achievements the player would have to figure out, and it's the only title in the series which I've not completed the entire way through. While researching for this video, I found that Last Day of Work released a guide for this game on their website that people had to pay money for. I found this really interesting, as the fun of the game was figuring out the puzzles by yourself, and I want to know if the guide explained the puzzles for players, or if it just explained the base mechanics. The final installment in the original series, Virtual Villagers 5 New Believers, has the villagers being captured by a large group of masked heathens. The player has to expand the village while not being scared away from their tasks. This game was released the same year as Virtual Villagers 4, and introduces a lot of new mechanics, from faith to convert the masked heathens over time, to god powers that are obtained throughout the game, to do events such as striking lightning or summoning a swarm of butterflies. This game was always my favourite in the series, as there is so much to do and requires a lot more strategy and thinking than the other installments. This game was the perfect final entry for the original series, and the gameplay striking a perfect balance for a casual and dedicated audience, the graphics fitting the tone of the game exceptionally well, and a beautiful storyline about a chief who forgot everything ever since losing his daughter. Two more installments were added to the Virtual Villagers franchise, however, they're a bit disconnected, and we'll talk about these later. Virtual Families is another beloved franchise from Last Day of Work, where the player controls the life decisions of an NPC who has their own hobbies, likes, and dislikes. The player helps their NPC raise a family, go through life, and restore their home one room at a time. A perfect addition from their first game game title, Little Pocket Pet, is the ability to positively and negatively reinforce actions that you like the NPCs doing or not doing, adding a new simulation level for this game. This game has many puzzles for the user to solve, and random events that are emailed to the NPCs throughout the game. This game uses the same technology behind the Virtual Villagers game, having the NPCs age in real time, and the control scheme being the same, with a replaced UI to match the theme of the game. This game is a perfect mix between Last Day of Work titles and The Sims, a perfect casual simulation game. The game received a sequel of its own, bringing a new location, an advanced shop system, new upgrades for the NPCs such as the maid service, career counselling and psychotherapy, and more collectibles and trophies for the player to track their success. Overall, the Virtual Families installments are well-made games that perfectly encapsulate what it means to be a casual simulation game. In a circular motion, Last Day of Work now develops games for modern mobile devices. The only original title the company has developed is Virtual Town a 3D game where you manage a town and interact with the town folk. Last Day of Work has ported all of their original hits such as Fish Tycoon, Virtual Villagers, and Virtual Families to mobile devices, where you can enjoy them in the same essence as when they were on PC. Unfortunately, the company added new installments to their existing franchises. These games include Fish Tycoon 2 Virtual Aquarium, Virtual Villagers Origins 2, and the upcoming Virtual Families 3. These games scream modern day mobile games, being free to play and riddled with microtransactions. It's a shame, as the original games involve strategy and dedication to progress the challenges, while the modern day installments feel pay to play while being a free to play game. These installments may resonate with newer audiences, but with fans who have enjoyed the original games, the entries feel alienated from the quality experiences of the prior installments.
for the use of stunning visuals and their revolutionary real-time game mechanic, Arthur and Carla Humphrey have grown their independent game studio, Last Day of Work, into a studio widely recognized by casual gamers for their exceptional simulation games. Titles such as Plant Tycoon, Fish Tycoon, Virtual Villages, and Virtual Families will forever be adored by fans of the genre, and pioneered a whole new genre of simulation games for casual players, cementing Last Day of Work in simulation game history.